Well, my friends, we're just about at the end of our highway for the uh, Route 66 as far as the Old Testament is concerned. Just two more books, and we're going to look at those uh, the remainder of the week. We're starting with Zechariah today. Zechariah was uh, written, uh, he was a contemporary with Haggai. Uh, the uh, people of Israel had come back to uh, at least about 50,000 of them, a few less than that, had come back to the land, and uh, their task was to rebuild the temple, and they had gotten stalled and all that. God sends two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, to encourage them to do what they were supposed to do, both physically and spiritually. Uh, and, and during that time, Haggai started in, in the sixth and seventh month. Uh, he had two different uh, prophecies that he came, gave to the people. And then after that, Zechariah steps up in the ninth month, and he has a prophecy for the people. And then uh, Haggai comes back. Actually, Zechariah was in the eighth month. Haggai comes back in the ninth month, and he has two more prophecies on the same day. And then he steps away and uh, into the background. We don't hear from him anymore. And Zechariah comes into the 11th month, and he begins his prophecies again. Uh, in this particular book, uh, our key phrase, not word, but phrase, is going to be Lord of Hosts. Uh, the Lord of Hosts is found 45 times in this book. So this is predominant in the book. And so that's going to be our key phrase. Uh, Zechariah has the people look in four different directions of these prophecies that he gives. Uh, first of all, there's a backward look in uh, his first prophecy in, in verse 3 of chapter 1. He says, Therefore says, say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, declares the Lord of hosts, that I may return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers. So he reminds them right off the bat the, of what their fathers were like, and he says, Don't be like them. So that is a backward look. Then he moves to an upward look, starting with chapter 1, verse 7, and going to the end of chapter 2, uh, he gives a series of eight different visions. And these are among the most interesting and a little strange, I might add, uh, visions in all the Bible. Some of them are pretty much uh, incomprehensible as far as being able to really interpret them. Uh, but the purpose was found in verse 13 of chapter 2, or... It says this, Be silent all flesh before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. So while we may be a little unclear on some of these prophecies and, and how to interpret them, we know their intent was to give the, them a holy hush before the Lord and to be able to realize that he is uh, aroused from his holy habitation. In other words, God's going to do something. And Zechariah wanted them to know that. Uh, we come to a third view, and that's the inward direction that he takes them. And that starts with chapter 3 and going to the end of chapter 4, pretty much, in which he takes them into their own, in, own hearts and lives and has them look at themselves. We have a beautiful, uh, a very interesting section in chapter 3 uh, found. It's, it's sort of almost New Testament-like. At least it's an illustration of what Christ does for us uh, in our salvation. Look look at this with me. Chapter 3, verse 2. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? And Joshua, now he was a high priest, was clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angel. And he spoke and he said to those who were standing before him, saying, Remove the filthy garments from him. Again he said to him, See, I have taken away your iniquity. Uh, from you and will clothe you with festal robes. Then I said, let them put on a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing by. Uh, we have almost a picture of what the Lord does for us in salvation. He removes our filthy garments of sin and he gives us the righteous garments of Christ. Uh, this may not be the, directly what he was speaking of here, but it certainly illustrates well what he's doing for Israel. But that can only be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that takes us to chapter 4, verse 6, in our key verse. Just a very interesting, helpful verse. It says this, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That's going to be our key verse, this last half. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. All that's going to be accomplished is going to be accomplished by the Spirit of God. And he, they needed to know that. It wasn't their efforts. It was God's. He takes them in one more direction. He gives them a forward look starting in chapter 7 and going to the end of the book. He now moves forward. Uh, actually, we have like a two-year gap 
between chapter 6 and 7. He comes back. The people are discouraged again. They're about halfway through building the temple. They need to have a future look. They need to know God had a plan. And so in a wonderful section here that we'll look at tomorrow, uh, we see a future uh, plans of God, including the coming of Jesus Christ at the second coming and uh, the building of his kingdom. So we'll look forward to that tomorrow. You have a wonderful day in the Lord.